Okay. Well, let's start on some phonogram review today and spelling word review. You all have a spelling quiz today. Um, did anybody get a chance to review some of their words after class? Alina, you did? Excellent. We do have some harder words than usual on the quiz and test um, this week and next. So if you're struggling with them, I would recommend practicing them outside of class a few times as well. Okay, let's start some phonograms, um, beginning with the phonogram th. Everyone please write th. And hold it up when you're done. Yes, Tyke? Yesterday was a busy day, so I didn't have a bunch of, so I didn't have a, a lot of chances to review my phonograms, because yesterday was my pop-up's birthday, and we had to do a whole bunch of other stuff, too. Fun. Okay, well, don't worry about it. I'm just saying for um, spelling that it would be good to review if you've had a hard time with these um, but usually, Tig, you do very well in the quizzes and tests, so I don't think that you necessarily need to do the extra practice. Okay, good job, everybody. Show me the, and say the sounds, please. Emma, would you unmute yourself and say the sounds of the phonogram? Mm -hmm. Great job. Okay, next up, let's do, let's do used at the beginning of a word at the end of a syllable, but not at the beginning of syllables after the first one, except for the ending ship. Who remembers that whole line about that phonogram? Kruthi, can you say it for us? I love this one. Used at the beginning of a word at the end of the syllable, but not at the beginning of most syllables after the first one except for the ending ship. Way to go, Kruthi. Josiah, you want to give it a try for us as well? That was great. But not at the be beginning of the syllables after the first one except for the ending ship. You got it. Excellent job to Josiah. Okay, next let's do another phonogram that makes a sh sound. Please write sh -zh. And I know a lot of you start to write just all of the sh phonograms, but think through which one is the sh -zh. Write just that. Just write sh -zh. Excellent. Please write sh, zh. Used at the beginning of syllables after the first one is the extra part of that one. Marcus, can you unmute yourself and say this phonogram? What do we call it? I'll say it for you one more time and then you can repeat it. Sh -zh, used at the beginning of syllables after the first one. Sh -zh, used at the syllables after another one. Good. The only extra part to add is used at the beginning of syllables after the first one. Like mission. That's one of the words you're going to see today in history. The mission is the name of that church that also was a place where people could come and get some free food and a place to sleep. Or vision is an example of that second sound. Okay, let's do just one more. Sh short letter, sh. 
used at the beginning of syllables after the first one. Sh, short letter, sh, used at the beginning of syllables after the first one. And Arshav, would you unmute yourself and tell us what we call this phonogram? Short letter, uh, sh short letter, sh Used at the beginning of syllables after the first one. Used use at the beginning of the syllables after the first one. Good job. So an example of that would be like proficient. One of the words we're going to do today, proficient. So let's go ahead and write that actually. Can you all write proficient? That uses the short letter sh. It's at the beginning of the syllable after the first one. It's at the beginning of a syllable, but not the first syllable. So if you hear sh at the beginning of a word, there's only one that's going to work. Which one is it? If you hear the sound sh at the beginning of a word, you know it's going to be what? Alexander? It's going to be this one at the beginning. If It's at the very beginning of a word. Uh -huh. Did I misspeak and say syllable instead of word? Okay, just to clarify, when you hear it at the beginning of a word, like ship or shore, oh, yeah. you know it's going to be this one. I know, but what about friendship? So, yeah, it can also be in the... Um, in a later syllable, like friendship with that suffix. Okay, so proficient is the word I was just saying. Proficient. Check that your spelling matches mine. And then I want you to turn it into proficiency. Proficiency. Proficient is mostly basic code. But make sure for that last syllable, you're sounding it out as shent, proficient. Should be an et e there. That's the thing that I'd say is most commonly misspelled, profish. Sometimes people put an it, i, e there. Okay. Let's check proficiency next. Simhita, you're so close, but you wrote proficiency, but it should be proficiency. Do you see that? An extra in? Okay, so close. Proficiency, good. I see Ariant writing in excellent print and cursive, writing both of them. Same with Alina, that looks good. Proficiency, swap out that t for C-Y, proficiency. Next, let's do occurrence. Occurrence. Double C, double R, and occurrence. This one has two double consonants. Double C, double R, in occurrence. Occurrence. Okay, hold it up when you're done, boys and girls. So far, I don't see any of them quite spelled correctly. Occurrence. Oh, very good, Aryanch. Aryanch got it. Arshab. Excellent. Okay, so occurrence. Check that your spelling matches mine. It should be a. Uh, o, U, double C, double R, 
And then remember that spelling pattern at the end, the E-N-C-E -E spelling pattern? Occurrence in nouns. So, so close. I saw some of you wrote A there. Because a lot of times we do have that A-N-C-E spelling pattern for nouns. Good job, um, Emma. You corrected it. Yes, Ariach? Can you practice the word miscellaneous? You know what? This is just a quiz today, and I want to make sure that we cover all of the words. Um, I've got a specific list for every single day, but you can practice it if you finish early, okay? Villain is our next one. Can you all write villain? We think to spell villain. So, for those of you who have certain words that you're wanting to practice extra, you can do that on your own. But um, for each day, I've got a specific group of words that we practice so that we review all of them before a quiz and then all of them before the test. Villain is the way we think to spell it. Great job for those of you who remembered it. Villain. Next up, let's write. The abyss. That first syllable is unstressed. We should think to spell abyss. Abyss, we think to spell abyss. Oh, so, so close, Sahanasri. We're going to double the S, though. Good job, Samhita. Good job, Ariyanch. Rishith, I'm going to pin you. So I, oh, good job. You've remembered to double the S. And I see Rishith also wrote miscellaneous for practice. Good. Some of you might, if you have extra time, write um, rap, uh, rendezvous for practice, too. That's one of the other ones that's a little tougher. Next up, though, I want everyone to write cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. We think to spell cantaloupe. Is that O sound at the end? A lot of people forget that it's going to be the ow, o, u, a phonogram. So think to spell cantaloupe to remember that. Cantaloup is the way we think to spell it. Great job for all of you who remembered an odd job six silent finally. Yes, Tyke? On the quiz, do the markings count as a count for a grade? Nope. For the quiz, you should still be marking them technically, but unlike in second grade, you won't be counted off for markings. <sighs> Yeah, and it's been that way all year long. You should mark them, but you're not counted off if you don't mark correctly. I'm yes, sir. I wrote cantaloupe in my own language. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Very creative. Oh, kruthi has got a cantaloupe to show us. Very nice. That looks tasty. Okay, last one to review. Appendix. Appendix. We we're supposed to review this a couple days ago and we didn't get to it. So we think to spell appendix. Appendix. We think to spell appendix. Marcus. Make sure you wake up. We need to have you totally focused on this. This is such good review for the quiz. Okay, that is all for our review. You can now take out your white, your binder and get ready for our quiz, which will have 31 words on it today. 31 words. It's longer than we have had recently.
Okay, 31 words. We're going to get ready for that quiz. I see still a couple hands up. Um, Tig, did you have something to ask or say? And boys and girls, if your hand is up, but you don't actually have something, you can just click put it down. No, not really. Um, yeah, no, not really. Okay. It was probably up from before. Yes, Harika? Um, yesterday, um, my dad printed off of this tea cat that I drew. Oh, that's so cute, Harika. How fun. Yeah, but I still have another coloring page to do. Okay. Yes, Josiah, I see your hand up too. Did you have something to share or ask? That was something before. Okay. Okay, I see Marcus numbering his page, Alexander and Sampita as well. I see a lot of people in very good ready positions with a good sturdy desk in front of them. You want to have your best handwriting for spelling especially. We should always do our best work. But with spelling, it's especially important to have excellent penmanship. Yes, Alexander? How many words are there? 31. 31. Are you inches ready? Very good. Yes, Selena? So can I see how my lovely one of is their pages? Or their page? Can you say that again? Um, can I see the poem? Hmm. Um, you know, I would love for you to, but right now your audio is not working very well. Uh, wait. Is, is there something? Working? Say something again. Is it working? Um, it's, I can hear you, but it's just a little echoey, but, um, yes, you can go ahead and still say the poem. Okay. For me, it's more like fuzzy-ish. Yeah, it's kind of like your voice is shaking, is the way it sounds. But go ahead and say the poem. We can still enjoy it. Okay. Oh, now um, it's great. Oh, really? Yeah, it's perfect. Now, I'm not sure why it, sometimes it sounds excellent, and then other times your voice sounds shaky. Um, but right now, it is perfect. So go ahead and say it for us. Okay. Jimmy Jet and his TV set by Shell Silverstein. <laughs> I'll tell you the story of Jimmy Jet, and you know what I tell you is true. He loved to watch his TV set almost as much as you. I'm going to stop you for a second, Alina. Can you turn your video on? Because I don't think that has anything to do with the audio issues. Because I'd love to see you um, say the poem for us. Okay. Okay. And now you can keep going. Okay. I'll tell you the story of Jimmy Jet, and you know what I tell you is true. He loved to watch his TV set almost as much as you. He watched all day, he watched all night, till he grew pale and lean. From the early show to the late, late show, and all the shows between. He watched shows eyes were frozen wide, and his bottom grew into his chair. His chin turned into a tuning dial, and antenna grew out of his hair. His brains turned into TV tubes, and his face a TV screen, and turned out saying great and voice, but where his ears have been. And he grew a flag that looked like a tail, so it clapped in Hilton. And now instead of him watching TV, we all sit around and watch him. Doing Jenna's TV set by Shawl Silverstein. Way to go, Alina. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did the um, I did the video last night. And, um, I, I like the like the submission of the poem. Yeah, I did it last night. 
Oh, nice. Oh, Ty has a little message for you, Alina. Oh, he wishes he could come, but he can't join the party. He has another party. Oh, oh okay. Ty. Okay. And, and it's at the same time. So. Yeah, that makes sense. And Alina, oh, okay. if you want me to invite the students in the 1130 class, I can as well. Would you like that? Of course. Okay. okay, I will invite them as well. Okay, so boys and girls, hopefully many of you have already submitted your Jimmy Jet poem. How many of you have already submitted that to Bright Thinker? Well, if you haven't yet, you can still do that today. Today is the last day to submit it. Although just like usual, even if it's due today, if there are any tech issues or problems, you can always submit things a little bit late on Bright, in Bright Thinker. Okay, um, I hope everybody is about done numbering their page to 31 and ready to go for the quiz. Okay, let's start. Word number one today is Rhapsody. Like, I was in Rhapsody during the beautiful orchestra concert. Rhapsody means great enjoyment. Remember to not hold up your words this time since it is a quiz. But I love the thumbs up from Alina telling me she's done. Rhapsody, rhapsody. My word two for today is conscience, conscience. Like your conscience tells you whether you are making the right choice, oftentimes, conscience. It tells you right from wrong. Do you all remember how we think to spell this one? Harika? Con science. Good. So you should be able to see the word science in this word conscience. Word number three comes from that, conscientious, conscientious. That last syllable, sh, uh, s. Do you guys remember that adjective suffix we've been using a lot? I should see you actually sounding out these words as you write, that's gonna help you. Can you all sound out, conscientious. Con, she, and shas. Yes, Josiah? Is it word two? Um, that should be number three. Number one was rhapsody. Number two, conscience. Number three, con, she, and shas. Word number four is discern, discern. Do you all remember what phonogram is in this one, an unusual phonogram? Discern. Number five is discernible. So we're just going to add the ible suffix, similar to the able suffix, but this one is the ible suffix. Discernible. Like for a spelling quiz, you need your handwriting to be discernible. Should be able to tell what letters you have written with good penmanship. 
Discernible. Dikshita, your camera is turned off. Can you turn it back on, sweetie? Thank you. Word number six is dissension. Dissension. Which means like some fighting. There was dissension between many of the Spanish explorers and Native Americans. Dissension. Okay, thumbs up if you have six words on your paper right now. Excellent. Number seven is rendezvous. Lean is having a little virtual rendezvous later today for her birthday. It's a little get together. Rendezvous, do you all remember how we think to spell this French word? Alexander, can you tell us the thing to spell? Rendezvous. Close. Rendezvous. Rendezvous. Mm -hmm. You think to spell rendezvous as rendezvous. But we say rendezvous. Give me a thumbs up once you're done with number seven. All right, now for word number eight, kerosene. Kerosene. The Wilder family might have used kerosene for lanterns that they would um, use for light. Kerosene. Rishi, do you have a question? What's what number five? Discernible. Word number nine, thumbs up if you're ready for number nine. Word number nine is combustible. Combustible means able to blow up or likely to. Dikshita? What is the number? Number nine. Okay. Word number 10. So number nine was combustible. Word number 10 is appendix. Appendix. Your appendix is part of your body. It is just out from your colon, kind of the lower part of your stomach. Appendix. Next. Number 11 is the plural. This is an unusual plural. Appendix becomes appendices. Appendices. We use this for um, the other meaning of appendix, like in the back of a book. You might have um, some information, like in our well-ordered language workbook, they might tell us about the poets and writers. You know, there's like little bits about William Shakespeare, for example. So that's in the appendices, 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 appendices. Alexander? Oh, my pencil is just broke, so I'm gonna go sharpen it really quick. Okay, um, we, 
we'll probably not wait for you because I, no, I want to make sure. I can so, just type in the letter. Yeah, perfect. Okay, now number 12. Thumbs up if you're ready for number 12. Is appendicitis. Appendicitis. It's the inflammation in your appendix. When people have a sharp pain in their stomach, it might be because of appendicitis. Excuse me, I'm going to snack on some pecans. Appendicitis. Marcus, are you making that face because you don't like pecans? No, I bit into a really spicy sausage. Oh, you might need to get some water. Okay, Alexander, the only word you missed was appendicitis. I was number 12. Oh, very yummy, Emma. Okay, word number 13 for today is chauffeur, like a personal driver. Oh, everybody's got yummy snacks for this morning. Chauffeur, chauffeur is the way we think to spell this one. It's another French word. Chauffeur. Should be word number 13 for you. I've got a bunch of French words in this lesson or whole list. Number 14 is another French one, debris. Do you all remember how we think to spell it? Alina? Debris. You got it, Debris. There's a silent phonogram at the end. Think of this like um, when Mount Vesuvius erupted, Pompeii had debris floating all over. Debris. Little bits of something that's broken off, like when a building is demolished because maybe they need to uh, tear down one and build another. There's debris all over. That's just little bits of the building. Debris. Now, number 15 is maneuver. Maneuver. The military might have some specific maneuvers as maybe the army, if they're going into battle, they have to have some strategies and placements for the soldiers. So a maneuver is like that little, um, the strategy or where they're gonna go, basically. Maneuver. It's also a verb, we can use it like, oh, I need to maneuver through the crowds to find my family. Maneuver, kind of work your way through. Okay, we're about halfway through. You can all take a moment to stretch, maybe stretch your fingers out if you're tired from, if they're tired from writing. Get a drink of water if you want. Miss Gardner. Yes, sweetie. Um, which one? Which one was number fifteen? Number fifteen was maneuver. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's enough of a little break. Although it looks like Kruthi is gone. Oh, there she is. Perfect. Emma and Arshav, are you there? Oh, Arshav was just doing a little floor stretch. Nice. Okay. Well, Aryant and Emma, I'm sure we'll be back any moment, but we can go ahead and write number 16, Europe. The continent, Europe. Should we capitalize it? Yes, it is a proper noun, a specific place. So please capitalize Europe. 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 Ariant, we just did number 16, Europe. What, what, what is number 17? We haven't done that yet. This is number 16. Then what numbers? Maneuver. Maneuver is 15. 16 is Europe. Hmm. If you're missing one, don't worry about it. Let's just keep moving forward. Number 17 is pneumonia. Pneumonia. When you hear that ya sound, do you remember the spelling pattern? Pneumonia is the way to really draw it out more. And I think we had a word recently with that same pattern. Pneumonia. Maybe I was just thinking of pneumonia. Okay, next one is number 18, penitent. Penitent, which means to be very sorry. Penitent. By the way, everybody, did you remember the um, two letter phonogram in pneumonia that we have? Well, there's one more than one two letter phonogram, but how we start it, good. Okay, so number 18, penitent. Number 19 comes from it, penitentiary. Penitent and penitentiary. This is what we use uh, to describe a jail or prison. And it's connected because it's technically the place you would go if you need to feel sorry for what you've done. Penitentiary. 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 Okay, who's ready for number 20? We're about two thirds of the way done. Number 20 is Ernest. Who remembers our thing to spell for this one? <laughs> Alexander. I have a nest in my ear. That's right. Ear nest. Ew, gross. Ear nest. I earnestly have a nest in my ear. I'm being honest. I'm serious. That's what earnest means. Okay, next, number 21. Everybody's favorite, miscellaneous. Oh, who thinks they know it? Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. Sound it out as you write. I think Ariant, was it you that got was the only one to get it right the other day? The first time? That was so good. But I think a lot of you probably are able to get it correct now after we've reviewed a little bit. Miscellaneous. Okay, next one. 
Who's ready for number 22? We're going to go from the longest word in our list to, I think, the shortest one. Vague is number 22. Vague. Do you remember what keeps the g just saying the g sound? Vague. Need to make sure it says that hard g. Yes, Tyke? Is miscellaneous number 20, 21? Um, yes, it should be 21. Marcus is staying so on top of it, quickly getting his words down. You all ready for number 23? Good. Number 23 is vaguely. We're just going to add our adverb suffix. Now it's vaguely. Like, I vaguely remember what you said the other day, but could you remind me of the details? Vague and vaguely mean kind of have a somewhat clear but not very precise idea. Number 24 is guarantee. Guarantee. Dikshita, what do you have in your hand over there? Is it a sponge? It's just a sponge. Yep, <laughs> it's a sponge. Just to play with? Yeah, just for... <laughs> okay, so guarantee. Next up is 25. Who's ready for 25? Number 25 is incessant. Like, yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age it is right? Incessant. Should be number 25. Incessant. Okay, and number 26, occurrence. We just practiced this. Do you guys remember the double consonants? So write occurrence, occurrence. Number 27 is proficient. Proficient. I'm still on the other word. Okay, Emma. So number 26 was occurrence. Give me a thumbs up once you're done. And then number 27 was proficient. She is proficient with her math facts. Proficient. Okay, number 28 comes from it, proficiency, proficiency. Oh, we are almost done. After this, we'll have just three more. Proficient. 
proficiency. Three more. The number 29 is villain. 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 Number 30 is Abyss. Abyss. And finally, 31 is what Kruthi's going to probably have for a snack later today. Cantaloupe. We're probably going to, or we'll think to spell cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you have 31 words. Those last ones were number 29, Villain. Number 30, Abyss. Number 31, Cante Laup. Okay, for those of you who um, have all of your words correctly on your paper, I think, Alina, maybe did I tell you you would do it today? Yeah. I remember. Mm -hmm. I would love for you to tell us all 31 words. So boys and girls, check as Alina reads off all of the words that your numbers match hers, okay? And Alina, could you say the number before you say the word? Okay. Uh, wait, is my voice clear? Mm hmm Okay. Number one, Rhapsody. Number two, Conscience. Number three, conscientious. Number four, discern. Number five, discernible. Number six, dissension. Number seven, rendezvous. Number eight, kerosene. Number nine, combustible. Number ten, appendix. Number eleven, appendices. Number twelve, Appendicitis, number mm, number thirteen, chauffeur, number fourteen, debris, number fifteen, maneuver, number sixteen, Europe, number seventeen, pneumonia, number eighteen, penny tent, number nine, penitentiary, number twenty, ear nest. Number 21, miscellaneous. Number 22, vague. Number 23, vaguely. Number 24, guarantee. Number, uh, number 25, incessant. Number 26, occurrence. Number 27, proficient. Number 28, proficiency. Number 29, Villain, number 30, Abyss, and number 31, Cantaloupe. <sighs> okay. Oh, good job, Alina. That was excellent. You had a very good pace. And for some of those, you pronounced them as the think to spell. So that might have helped some people, which is totally fine since this is just a quiz. We can do a little bit of extra help. Now, are there still any words that somebody needs repeated after Alina did that, that great job of slowing it down? Hopefully a lot of you filled in your gaps, but I'm opening up the chat. So please tell me the number if you have one repeated to repeat. Okay, Harika, number 15 is maneuver. We need to maneuver through the crowds. Write the number of a word you need repeated. Number 14, debris, Emma. 
14 is debris. Dikshita. Number eight is kerosene. Kerosene. Ariyanch, number 24 is guarantee. Guarantee. Marcus, it looks like you've got a lot missing. I am happy to say them for you, but make sure that you're saying, writing them down during the quiz consistently, okay? Marcus, number two, conscience. Number three, conscientious. Number four, discern, Marcus. I'm going to take a break from Marcus's so he can write those. Uh, Emma, number 24 is guarantee. Marcus, let me know when you're ready for 16. Hi, I'm looking up that book that you're talking about to see if it would be a good one for the book report because I'm not familiar with it. Oh, yeah, that's a Newberry Medal winner. You can definitely do that one for the book report, Tig. Okay, Marcus, number 16, Europe. The continent, Europe. Number 18, penitent. Tig. Tig, I just looked up the book that you mentioned, and that looks like an excellent one for the book report. Yes, you are welcome to do that one for the book report. Okay, Marcus, the last one that you asked for, number 19, is penitentiary. Penitentiary. Okay, boys and girls. Great job on that quiz today. That took much longer than usual um, because we've got some harder words and it's a long list too. So great job on that. I was going to have us do, do a little practice of writing simple compound and complex sentences, but um, I think that you all need a little break from writing. So let's just say each one of these sentences for our little grammar practice today. I'm going to go around calling on each person and I'll have um, you do simple, and then the next person, compound, and then complex. You guys remember the difference between them? Okay. For example, you could say for a simple sentence, I went to Europe. And for a compound sentence, I went to England and I went to Ireland. For a complex sentence, because or although... I liked England, I enjoyed Ireland more, okay? So you could say those as simple compound and complex sentences. Those, those things are very accurate to me because mm -hmm. I know I've been to Ireland, but I might have, and I might have been to England too. Oh, nice. I have been to both and I do enjoy Ireland very much. Although I'll probably go to uh, London this summer and that will be fun. Okay, so boys and girls, are you ready? Have in your mind a simple sentence, a compound sentence, and a complex sentence. Be thinking of it. Okay, Tig is the first one top left on my screen, so I'm going to call on him first. So we'll start off with simple. Can you give us a simple sentence? Okay. Hmm. Ireland was fun. 
Ireland was fun. Excellent, simple sentence. Dikshita is next on my screen. Can you give me a compound sentence? I will go to shore, but but we will have to go to the park. Nice. You're using one of the fanboys. Great job. Alexander's next on my screen. Can you give me a complex sentence? Let me see. I, hold on. I just need to think of one of the complex words. I'll give you some examples. Because, since, although. Oh, I got one. Okay. Because it was hot today, I drank lemonade. Great. Great example of a complex sentence. Okay, Emma is next on my screen. Could you give me a simple sentence? Um, simple sentence. We went to the park. Very good. Yep, just one subject and one predicate. Harika, you're next. Please give me a compound sentence. Um, me and my sister are going to be biking to the community center. Okay, so you and your sister are going to bike. To the community center. Let's add a fanboy. And my dad. So, and my dad, what is he going to do? Are going, are biking to the community center. Okay, let's change this up just slightly. So, Harika, you could say, my sister and I are going biking to the community center. And my dad is biking to the community center. How about that? Okay. Can you say that? Mm, me and my sis wait. Say my sister and I. My sister and I are biking to the community sister and community center and my dad is biking to the community, biking center. To the community center. Good. You need a whole independent clause after it. So after the fanboy and you still need my dad and what he's gonna do. Okay, Alina is next on my screen. Could you give us a complex sentence? Mm, okay. Uh, mm, since it was and since it was really cold today, we couldn't go to the park, but we did go sledding. Oh, nice. You actually made a compound complex sentence because you had a complex sentence and then you added on one more independent clause. Oh, yeah. Whoa, that actually, was very complex. I, yeah, okay, for it is. You're next on my screen. Can you give me a simple sentence? And boys and girls, hopefully you all have it in your mind already so that we can say it as soon as you're called upon. Marcus? Could you unmute yourself and give us a simple sentence? America is cold and chilly right now. <laughs> Good one. Okay, Rishith, please give us a compound sentence. We won't have ice cream nor cake. Ooh, using nor. Nice. Um, and let's add on that a little bit. We won't have ice cream, nor will we have cake. Nice. Okay, Josiah, could you give us a complex sentence? Because, because I got a dog today, he licked me a lot. Oh, cute. Okay, Ariyanch, simple sentence. I poured water. Very good, simple sentence. Subject. Or just I poured. 
Or even I poured would be a simple sentence. Good. Krithi? Compound. Um, I got to play outside, but later I had to write my tables. Nice job. That's excellent. Sahanasri Complex. You could use words like because, since, although. Okay. Since I went to the park, I can't go to the store. Yeah, very good. Great example of a complex sentence. Okay, I only have two left, so we're gonna skip over simple and I'll have Samhita give me compound and then Arshab give me complex. Uh, I went outside, I went outside in the morning and watered the plants. So not quite, um, that is a compound. Oh wait, no, you were supposed to give compound. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was thinking of complex still. Yes, that is a good compound sentence. I went outside this morning and I watered the plants. <laughs> sorry, Samita. Okay, and now Arshab, you can give a complex sentence. <laughs> There was sunlight on the bridge when we were on it. When we were on it. Good. Yeah, when is one of those subordinate conjunctions to make a complex sentence too. Okay, excellent job, everybody. We have just two more cards that we're going to write for roots, and then we'll get into some math. Can you all take out two index cards we're going to be writing about today to go along with our Jungo Jungtum Latin words? Miss Gardner, are we going to have an ear pod game? Yes, I do have one planned for you to do as soon as we're done with some math review. Oh, and I just realized I um, hope that this is going to work to connect. I've got a different computer today. Oh, yeah, I think it should work. To use the document camera. Okay, so Yungo Yungtum is to unite or connect. Miss Garner, for me, you're a little muffled. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Is that better? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I'm on a different computer than usual today because I left my um, other one at home. So I have to readjust to the way that um, this one works for the microphone. Okay, so the word that we're going to be using doing today comes from Yungo Yungtum, and it's the word subjugate. Can you all say subjugate? Now sub means under. And the jug part comes from Yungo Yuk Tum, so it means connect. Subjugate means actually to connect under the yoke of power. The yoke of power, <laughs> yoke, we know that for like farmer boy, right? But yoke does not always have to do with like animals. Sometimes it means like, oh, there's something kind of heavy on our shoulders. So subjugate has to do with feeling like, oh, I'm way down under this 
uh, something powerful that's controlling. So subjugate to connect under the yoke of power. Okay, and one more word we're going to do today is conjugate, or actually conjugation. Conjugation kind of sounds like conjunction. But conjugation has to do with... Um, when a verb changes forms, depending on who the subject is. Marcus, this is the only time we write these. This is not on Bright Thinker. So you've got to do this now, okay, bud? So conjugation is like this. In Latin, amo means I love, which Probably sounds similar. Um, Emma to Spanish, right? Since Spanish comes from Latin. So it would change to amas to say you love or amat to say he, she, or it loves. So that's called conjugation when the verb changes form depending on who is the subject. Just like we would say, like love changes to loves, depending on who the subject is, whether it's singular or plural. But in English, we don't do this conjugation um, in the same way we would in other languages. Spanish, in Spanish, you conjugate just like you would in Latin, though. So conjugation, we're going to write a set of verb endings joined with a stem. A set of verb endings joined with a stem. Marcus, once again, this is the only time that we write our Latin roots. So you've got to write it now. So basically, the verb endings change, but that stem or the base of it is always the same. You know, we talk about the base word. That's what it means by stem, is like the base word. So there's different verb endings, but the base stays the same. I'll put this in the chat as well, conjugation. A set of verb endings joined with a stem. Okay, so that is our last Latin root of the week. You can staple these together. Got all of the roots you need for the week to go with Jungo Jungtum. Okay, boys and girls, we are going to next move on to some math review. 
sorry, my camera's not working. I'll probably have to leave the meeting and come right back. Oh, now it's working. Okay. Can you all give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Okay. Can you hear me clearly? Good. Sorry about that. Once again, I'm on a different computer. And so going from the document camera back to this camera just works differently. There's two tabs of here. There's two Miss Gardeners. Okay, boys and girls, it's okay. I gotta go. Okay, that's right. Hi, Marcus. I need everyone to keep themselves muted. I need to change the layout as well. That messed up. Okay, boys and girls, sorry about that. Okay, for math today, we are not gonna do anything new. We're just going to spend some time reviewing. Um, and you've got a quiz on BrightThinker to do for today. I mainly wanted to go over centimeters and meters again because we've spent a lot of time on kilometers, kilograms, and um like in everything in the thousands place as we convert, but we haven't spent as much time with centimeters. So would you all take out your notebook? I want to do a few practice problems of those. And then we'll just go over what you'll see on Bright Finger for today. Also, how did you all feel about the math workbook pages from yesterday? Thumbs up if you felt pretty good about liters and milliliters, sideways if you struggled at all, and thumbs down if you had a hard time. Okay, any questions about that page or those pages? Okay, so, once again, mainly today, I wanted to go over centimeters and meters. So I'm just gonna use my whiteboard so I'm not gonna mess with that document camera. I think that's what was causing some of the issues. If we have, for example, 212 centimeters, remember that centimeters are one hundredth of a meter. So how many meters is this? Kruthi? Um, can we also do it on the whiteboard? Yes, you can do it on your work, whiteboard actually as well. So you don't have to take out your notebook. You all can just use your whiteboard for this. That is... <laughs> So there are 100 centimeters in one meter. 
So if we have 212 meters, two meters, that's two meters, that's right. And then how many extra centimeters? 12. Good. So boys and girls, with centimeters, there are a hundred in one meter. That's the only one we've really been working with that's not looking at the thousands place. Okay, so remember that for centimeters, that centi means one hundredth. Okay, let's do another one just like that. If I gave you, if I said 437 centimeters, how many meters in centimeters is that? You can just write it on your board and then show it to me. How many meters in centimeters are in 437 centimeters? Hold it up as soon as you're done. Great work, four meters and 37 centimeters. Okay, now let's do the opposite. We're gonna take something in centimeters, or uh, meters and centimeters and convert it to centimeters. If I said five meters and five centimeters, five meters and five centimeters, what is that in? Centimeters. Five meters and five centimeters equals how many centimeters? Great job, Alexander, Kruthi, Sahanas, oh, almost Sahanasri. Now what you said was 55 centimeters, but remember that five meters is 500 centimeters. Now, Emma, centi is 100, 100th. So there are 500 centimeters in five meters. Five hundred centimeters are the same as five meters. Great job for all of you who wrote 505. 505. I know that this one is different than what we've been doing with a lot of the other measurements. We've been using thousands a lot. But remember that for centimeters, 100 centimeters are in one meter. Great job, Emma. Okay, let's go over now that Bright Thinker quiz. Boys and girls, are you unable to see? Kruthi, Alexander, go ahead and unmute yourself. What's the problem? I can see. I just had to say, um, 
You know the yellow screen that says your email, email address, your phone number? That keeps on popping up on my um, right thinker. The yeah, what? Oh, the, the same thing for this? Yeah. I Yeah, that's been popping up for me as well. Um, me you too. You can exit out of it. Or, but it'll keep popping up. And so if you do, uh, if you do settings, we'll actually walk through that for a moment. Um, Miss Garner, I thought um, today uh, we were supposed to like uh, do all the cursive ones again, the capital law. Oh, you know what, sweetie? I'm sorry, we ran out of time. I promise that we'll do it next week sometime, okay? Okay. So um, here, this is my email, my email for accessing the Bright Thinker. If I do send code, it would, it says um, it's unverified. You can enter maybe your parents' phone number so that it's saved. Okay. Unsaved changes. Okay, so I guess I'll save it. Oh, it was, ugh, never mind. I changed it to my personal email. Hi, boys and girls, if you don't want, sorry, I'm going to stop presenting for a moment. If you don't want it to show or to keep getting this, um, just ask your parents for help with the Bright Thinker um, settings. Okay, this computer is so, so slow for me right now. Okay, let me go ahead and present over to the quiz now. Can you all see my screen? Okay. So um, the volume of soda bottles, these are the kind of questions where you need to be thinking basically about how much is a milliliter versus a liter. So um, milliliters or liters, what would you use for measuring one of a, the soda bottles here? And then you'll have some converting ones. Don't use extra spaces. Um, I will check these as always, but try not to use any extra spaces so that you can be counted right immediately. Um, four kilometers is the same as how many meters? What would be the answer to this one? Four kilometers is the same as how many meters? Ariyanch? Four thousand meters. Good. It's, kilo means a thousand. Good. Kilo means 1,000. So four kilometers is 4,000 meters. Use the comma in there to separate your place value, although it still should count as correct, even if you don't have the comma. Um, and then some of these multiple choice questions, one kilometer equals how many meters? Sing the song to yourself. That's going to be a big help. Remember, Kilo, or sorry, a thousand kilo, a hundred hecto, ten is decameter, one tenth deci, one hundred centi, one thousandth is millimeter. Josiah, can you sing it for us? Because I think that's going to be a huge help for you. One thousand kilo, a hundred hecto, ten is decameter. 
One ten fifty, one hundred seventy, a thousand is millimeter. Good job, Josiah. And that's true for all of the metric system. So even though it's talking about meters, that's true for liters and grams too. That kilo means a thousand, milli is one thousandth. Means it takes a thousand of them to equal one gram or liter. Okay, so like one blank equals 1,000 milligrams. Um, here is once again conversion. 7,090 milliliters, it's going to be seven liters, and just write the number, don't use spaces, just the number. Okay, five kilograms, 304 grams, and then we've got more questions like this where there is um, an item, tell if it is about a milligram, a gram, or a kilogram. Would we measure a truck as about five millimeters, meters, centimeters, or kilometers? Okay, so all things that we've been doing a lot of. Any questions about this, this quiz? Yes, Ariyanch? So for a question that you just um, showed us that it's a the end. so one of the other boxes it had a zero there a zero supposed to be there and, oh, yeah, um, and, yeah so do, um do you have to put a zero in where the grams is or do you just yes. leave it blank um you should put a zero for the grams yep yeah, because there aren't any extra grams but i think yeah i think you do have to put a zero there Okay. Good question. That one is a little bit of a tricky format. So thanks for asking that. Yeah, 7,000 grams is exactly seven kilograms, for example. So you would put seven there and zero for the grams. Okay, if there are no other questions, we'll just leave it at that for your review. Next week we have, um, we're gonna jump right into our next chapter, which is standard form of measurement. So we're gonna hear about the same types of things, length and weight and volume, but we're gonna talk about it with the standard form of measurement like cups and ounces and pounds, feet, miles, all of that, okay? Now it is 1010, let's start our Nearpod game to review all the things that you've been doing throughout the week, We've got some grammar questions, some math questions, a little bit of history, science, and literature. No roots for this week. I didn't, we ended up having enough already. So I've got the Nearpod game here for us to play. Oops. My baby brother is watching Trolls. I can hear the show. <laughs> I'm giving my sister a big surprise today. That's nice. She doesn't know what it is yet, but she knows I'm going to throw it. It's inside of this balloon. Uh, sweetie, we need to keep ourselves muted, okay? Sorry, the internet is just being really slow for me, um, and it maybe is also just my Chromebook not working great. But I'm pulling it up.
Well, sorry. It's taking so, so long. Yes, Rishith? You know what? Uh, that's a great suggestion. It is the website loading is what's the problem. I will not make the mistake again of forgetting my computer and using the Chromebook instead because I, now I know it does not work as well for class. When is Alina's birthday? When, like, I know when her birthday was, just what time is the call? I think it's going to be 7 o'clock, right, Alina? Mm -hmm. And also, I'm also on a Chromebook. I was always on a Chromebook. Nice. That's why I'm well, now it's loading. I'd have to ask my mom that. Finally, okay. <laughs> now here's the code LIV45. I feel all of your pain when you're working on a Chromebook and it's being really slow. Yeah, but can you send it in the chat so we can like, click on the link? Yes, of course. LIV45. And I think the website is join.nearpod.com. What just happened? So sorry, boys and girls, this is not working well. So I got kicked out, but um, I'll send the link and the code again. The code is already there. already there. Oh, good. Okay. So here's the link. And then again, the code is LIV45. Looks like some of you have already logged in. Excellent.
Miss Gardner, there's an imposter. Which one is the imposter? Oh no! My screen just shows um. I'll never know, I guess. My screen just shows an unhappy piece of paper. <laughs> no, seriously, that's what my screen. That's what my screen. It's white with that unhappy piece of oh, paper in the like middle. The error message? Yeah. The error message. Oh yeah. Okay. Can you load the page? Refresh it. Yeah. I also had the Looks most like ridiculous. Most logged in. I also had the most ridiculous name ever. What is it? The cute, the cute little white fluffy cloud of death. That's dark. <laughs> Or you could make it unhappy piece of little paper. Huh. That'd be a good name. Okay, boys and girls. It looks like almost everybody's logged in, even with all of the connection issues. Uh, maybe not tied, though. I'm going to stop recording now. Maybe that'll help, too, because we don't need to record anymore. I'm recording.